everybody. Beandrew TV here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another news announcement video here for Prehistoric Kingdom. Seems like the uh, the news just keeps on coming here. The last few days for uh, Jurassic World Evolution uh, 2, Prehistoric Kingdom. There's a whole bunch of stuff coming out of Gamescom and other things there. So, uh, but yeah, this is going to be the official devlog for August 28th, otherwise known as the beta announcement devlog. So, uh, yeah, if you didn't already, be sure to go check out the uh, beta announcement trailer there. We do have a video up on the channel kind of breaking down all the fun stuff that we saw saw it in that trailer already so check that out if you haven't already but we're gonna go ahead and focus on all the new exciting stuff that wasn't in the trailer yesterday I think go ahead and uh, highlight here in the um, the devlog here. So let's go ahead and uh, read through it because there's a lot of stuff. So uh, first off, yeah, closed beta arrives December 6th, 2021 for eligible backers and early adopters. So you do need to be an eligible backer and early adopter. Uh, you cannot get the game um, as of right now. So yeah, if you do have beta access, you will be able to play it uh, when the beta comes out December 6th. So awesome. Uh, introducing new mechanics, features, and animals. Prehistoric Kingdom's next closed release will be available to those who pledged for beta access. Our public launch into early access has now moved to April 2022 to give the team an extended period for some important gameplay changes, additional content, and polish. Uh, we bet you're feeling uh, ravenous to learn more, so let's dive into some of the things you can expect to see in the beta. More features and content will be unveiled closer to its release. Awesome, let's get to the animals here. So, Beta will be arriving with 14 prehistoric beasts and birds to care for. Alongside the species present in Alpha, the park's newest specimens include Archaeopteryx, Camarasaurus, Dinocaris, Pachyhinosaurus, Protoceratops, Parasaurolophus, Torvasaurus, and the Woolly Mammoth. You can find the initial early access species roster on our website here. So yeah, if you want to go and check that out, definitely do that. So here we have the Dino Carius. Excuse me if I pronounce that wrong. The Danger Duck. I love that. I'm just calling it the Danger Duck now. That's awesome. <laughs> As uh, the definitive oddball, the giant um, or... Ornothomid, oh my gosh, <laughs> defies all expectations by sporting a bizarre set of attributes. A duck bill, a humped back, sizable forelimbs equipped with sharp claws, and a larger-than-life appetite. Holy cow, this thing looks crazy. Um, to top it all off, this partic uh, peculiar animal comes with a featherless variant. Would you think this makes it scaly, leathery, naked? We're just as confused as you, but hey, that's all right, they included it, right? So, uh, next up for our feathered friend, uh, flying its way into your heart, the, that word, uh, soars through beta as the second mini aviary species. I'm just gonna skip a lot of the dinosaur names. I'll learn them over time. I'm not gonna try and embarrass myself now. You all, if you're a dinosaur nerd, you know what the name is, so you, you insert the name there. <laughs> Unlike the Microraptor, it sports a striking color scheme and includes sexual dimorphism. Dimorphism. Uh, making the males uh, ever so pretty. Ah, okay, so the, uh, I got, yeah, there it is. The female uh, is pretty plain looking and the male flashes some colors to attract the female noise. Found in German limestone uh, deposits dating back to the Jurassic, this magpie-sized uh, critter holds great scientific significance as one of the earliest bird-like dinosaurs. Cool, yeah. Bird-like dinosaur, that's cool. Uh, additional animation. As animals are often in the spotlight, it's incredibly important to us to make them look as realistic as possible, and that includes their animations. For the past few months, we've uh, been hard at work expanding the animation libraries for all of our species, including many little actions such as stretching, scratching, shaking, chewing, and more. Uh, we hope you appreciate these quality of life upgrades as much as we do, as they help cement the idea that these are living, breathing animals uh, Yeah, in your parks there. Yeah, it's awesome. I love the uh, look of this here. And we saw that a little bit in the uh, trailer yesterday as well with some of the um, some of the animations for the uh, new uh, animals and everything. So that's really cool. I like that. <laughs> Modular Mayhem. Let's see what this. In July, we gave our community a survey to find out what our future players would be most interested in seeing. I took part in that. Uh, your answers were incredibly insightful as they again confirmed uh, that the direction of the game is heading is towards uh, the heading towards is not only close to our hearts but also true to the community's wishes for the project. There are a number of upgrades coming, not to mention some rather exciting avenues set to be explored. Um, we're certain you're going to be just as excited for them as we are, and can cannot wait to share more with you in the future. The following additions are just the beginning, and the first one here is going to be the tropical theme. Yeah, we definitely saw that. Uh, experience the sunny tropics with this brand new theme arriving in the beta. Containing over 100 pieces, the tropical theme includes a selection of new and exciting decorations inspired by a variety of real world cultures. Uh, vases, totems, torches, and statues are but a handful of some of the props and pieces available in this exciting expansion to the modular lineup. Your prehistoric zoos have never looked so exotic. 
about it. That's really cool. And um, I can I already have heard this a few times about the um, the prehistoric kingdom uh, prop size and stuff. It's going to be lower than like Planet Zoo and Planet Coaster and games like that. So uh, just know that yeah, because you can because we can stretch things and resize them and everything. We don't need to get, uh, you know, multiple sizes of the same item uh, over and over again in prehistoric kingdom things, because yeah, we can uh, mold and stretch them kind of how we want them and everything. So uh, just as shown above, new railings, benches, braziers, thatch roofs, and palm weed floors. Uh, one of the new wall sets. Yeah, it looks awesome. So uh, we can't spoil it all, but please enjoy some of this beautiful scenery created by our concept artist uh, Ida or Ida. Uh, the uh, the team's putting a lot of work into making sure this theme feels inspiring to build with, and we cannot wait to see what kind of wonderful architecture the beta community comes up with yeah it's really exciting i uh, love that bench and everything look this little i don't know wonder if this hut is uh, all one complete set there or if it's showing uh, a bunch of separate items that's going to be coming with it to make that hut uh, but either way yeah it's a really cool theme to uh start off with expanded scenery in this raw oh, when i saw this i was like yes you're speaking to my soul right now uh prehistoric kingdom dev team <laughs> i love all this clutter right here um our default theme has been the reinvigorated has been reinvigorated with new props designs and some much requested pieces to highlight a few of the most demanded, we believe these miscellaneous pieces will allow players to greatly enrich the authenticity of their zoos. And yes, again, I just can't uh, hi highlight enough how awesome this is. Uh, at least for like, again, like Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo, those type of games. These are like some of the first items, uh, first type of items that people either request to have or go and make themselves basically either out of like art shapes or other pieces in the <laughs> in the game. Like you'll see spades pop up made out of art shapes, hoses made out of uh, little gutter pieces and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, but look at this all these vents and uh, coat racks and brooms. Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect to uh, litter your backstage and parks with to really make them uh, come to life there. So uh, there are many new items to discover in Prehistoric Kingdom's beta, ranging from empty buckets to complete sets of ventilation ducts and gutter piping. Uh, not to mention that fancy new recoloring sure does help a lot. Ah, that's right. Don't forget. It's right. Uh, flexi color. So the same bucket, uh, take it and, um, you know, just uh, recolor it so it's uh, being able to use a whole bunch of times over. And I love the war uh, wear and tear look on it as well. I mentioned that with Planet Zoo a lot. It's um, everything looks really great in Planet Zoo, but that's the thing is like everything looks really pristine and great, and there's no like scuff marks and anything, uh, no age, right? So it's really cool that we can get um, some kind of scuffed up type um, buckets and everything there. I wonder if we're gonna be able to switch out the material. I remember uh, a lot of the building and wall sets from Prehistoric Kingdom. You could switch out the materials for them. So I wonder if that's gonna be uh, an option for some of these miscellaneous pieces back here as well. So uh, par uh, particular particles, waterfall galore. Oh my gosh, S Dan is just like. Like, he's just having the time of his life right now, seeing that there's waterfalls. A highly requested feature, fully modular water effects will be making their way into beta, allowing builders to create custom waterfalls and fountain features. That looks great. It really does look awesome, doesn't it? So get ready to make some fun waterfalls. Uh, you'll have to use uh, Leaf's version and the real waterfalls. Leaf's version was to take a uh, the plaster wall set and stretch it so that it looks like a waterfall set going down. You can almost combine the two now to make them uh, look really, really cool. Uh, for those less impressed by uh, waterworks, smoke and fire are also available. Uh, great for torches, bonfires, and setting the whole park ablaze. Am I right? Yeah, right. That's awesome. Uh, so I wonder if we're going to be able to manipulate the fire in terms of like stretching and uh, you know making it bigger and smaller and stuff like that. So that's interesting animal ornaments uh, park decor has never been easier than with our brand new dynamic animal statues uh, statues these intelligent modules can be manipulated on the fly much like our styling system for walls and roofs so we'll be able to switch out the um, the material for it as you can see there no uh, players can pick from three different poses for any animal species in the game complete with a selection of materials to choose from moreover an initially limited selection of bones are also available making skeleton mounts or custom displays entirely possible Possible. This list will only grow with time as we expand our fossilized repertoire. Oh my gosh, people are gonna freak out! <laughs> They're gonna say, "Oh gosh, it's a it's a poaching pack, right?" Oh man, prehistoric kingdom! How could you make a poaching pack for your game already? I mean, that's a little bit of a inside joke for the Planet Zoo community, but this is awesome. This is really cool. I can imagine uh, people recreating the um, Jurassic Park uh, visitor center uh, right away, right? Doing the big T Rex um, skeleton and everything like that. That's awesome. <laughs> so uh, next up is progress. Science points. Uh, science points are a type of economy item used in excavations and research. They're passively accumulated by constructing habitats, scaling, and effectiveness based on a number of factors that players work towards. Um, the better the exhibit, the more rewards to reap. And just to note, research is not included in beta. But okay, it's something to look forward to, I guess. 
Excavations, uh, fantastic beasts and where to mine them, or rather excavations, that was good, way to go, <laughs> are essential mechanic in unlocking your primordial pals and their genetic skins. Scattered across the globe, players use science points to seek out their next big attraction. Okay, okay. So I think that's pretty similar to what we see in like Jurassic World Evolution 2. But kind of all these games work off a excavation type uh, system, it seems like. Uh, the future. Following our early access release, Prehistoric Kingdom will continue to see heavy development. We are a small team with big ambitions, and it's important to remind everyone that some aspects of the game simply won't be as fleshed out as others for the initial launch. We understand that some of you may be frustrated by the move to April 2022, but the reality is that once the game goes live, our core infrastructure needs to be locked in place. Any major changes need to happen before then, or else we risk breaking saves or some of the items within them. Breaking save compatibility from alpha and beta isn't too bad, but we'd like to avoid it as much as possible during early access. Uh, we have a laundry list of improvements and new features that we'd love to add, and the incredible patience of our entire community has allowed us to go above and beyond the original goal in making this game into what it is today. Nevertheless, our limited resources do mean that sacrifices have to be made when it comes to development speed and game complexity. We hope that what we have to offer will feel like a great value to everyone waiting for the game, and that you'll have the have a, uh, an incredible experience despite the size of our development development team and resources. So what is in store for Prehistoric Kingdom? All right, cool, we get a little peek behind the curtain here. So modular and dynamic buildings, your park, your rules. Modulars are special facility pieces designed to create functional buildings and attractions using the modular system. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes, each appealing to different aspects of park management or guest satisfaction uh, with assigned properties. Looks like we have amenity to interact with guests, destination, interact with guests, pathfinding, editable, assigned to editable pieces, Animal interacts with animals. Habitat interacts with habitats. Utility assigned for infrastructure. Uh, hinted at earlier, the dynamic animal statues are actually a module containing the amenity and editable properties. So it interacts with guests and it's assigned to the editable pieces. Uh, indicating that it both interacts with guests, providing an education bonus, and is customizable. We want to merge the gap between modular building and park interaction, so you'll be needing uh, new park services. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the new module here, we have kiosks. Kiosks are an open air module with a unique four x two design, making them friendly for all sorts of buildings, whether they're outdoors or indoors. So is this like a thing that you plop inside of a custom build? Oh, it's like a um, from Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, except I wonder if we can make it null. It's, it's a kiosk. So you can just plop it down and click on it and tell it what to serve, right? So if you want it to be a T-Rex cafe, it could be a T-Rex cafe or like, yeah, or a shopping kiosk type thing. Okay, I think I know what they're going for and that's awesome. Uh, changing its, uh, da, da, da. unlike our current buildings, kiosk modules are defined by their function. Rather than having a unique module, module in the UI, the T-Rex cafe is now a style for the fast food kiosk, changing its service menu, set dressing, and logo in an instant. Yep, that's exactly what it is, so. For those of you not familiar, yeah, we're gonna plop down this little thing and you can build around, you can build a facade around it or you can make it a food truck or you can make it, you know, whatever you want it to be essentially. Um, and then, yeah, there'll be like a little drop down menu where you can make this a T-Rex cafe, uh, the drink shop, the gift shop, and it'll just automatically plop. It'll plop all these items uh, just like this uh, for you to kind of build around. Excuse me, for you to build around. For the shopping kiosk, You'll find styles for two of our lovely brands, Apato Apparel and Giganto Gifts. This module provides um, themed merchandise and shopping opportunities for your guests. So yeah, same thing, you can kind of switch it around. That looks really cool too, like you kind of a sleek modern set and kind of a more, um, I don't know, like cheeky, <laughs> just typical zoo type thing. Um, in addition to changing the style slash shop brand, players can toggle off the props and back half of the kiosk, giving way to an even greater number of design options. That's so cool. So yeah, we can make it totally null or invisible if we want to, kind of like the bird cages. So think of the, um, the yeah, the, avi uh, the aviaries, how we can uh, leave those on or take those, uh, make them invisible and build around them. Same thing with the shop kiosks here. Um, so I imagine a employee will kind of stand behind an area where the, you know, the checkout is, but other than that, you can kind of build it all custom. Uh, or again, if you don't want to go into the building aspect of it, kind of leave it like this. And um, yeah, so that's really cool. I like that a lot. That's a really cool idea. The end game. We plan to do away with the locked buildings in alpha and beta, opting for prefabs made entirely with the modular system. Oh, so they don't want to even have like any of the prefabbed buildings like they built. Like remember we had the already like a Pado 
apparel building, so they want to get rid of that. Uh, this allows players to delete, recolor, restyle, or even change the building's function. In essence, every piece of functionality will be handed fully modularly, unlocking limitless potential. Our, girl for, our goal for early access is to develop modules as, uh, as many facility types as possible, granting players the creation of custom viewing, uh, custom viewing towers, hotels, nurseries, and more hotels. Um, however, this does not mean players will be required to build everything by hand. Through the powerful prefab system, Users, users can instead select from a large array of officially pre-made facilities and decorations to populate their parks with. The workload only decreases with all of the creati creativity options still present. Workshop support is something we are committed to including to uh, including as well, making prefab sharing all that much easier. Okay, so it sounds like everything is moving to this. So if you want to, not even like the kiosks, but if you want to plop down just like a store, like the Apado Apparel, or the T-Rex Cafe, like the actual T-Rex Cafe and not the kiosk, then it's gonna come like we were talking before where uh, it'll have a few different uh, prefab styles that you can choose from, or you can make it completely uh, null or invisible and kind of build up around it. Uh, let me know if I'm reading that right or understanding that right, but if so, that's really, really cool, because again, why lock your players into having to build in a certain style when you have all these customization options uh, available. So yeah, let me know if I'm understanding that right. And what do you think of that? That's a really cool um, get around, I guess you'd say, for, um, yeah, customizing your parks and everything. So uh, future update, paleobotany. Working with zoologist and scientific author uh, Tom Parker, we're pleased to announce that the team has started pre-production on prehistoric plant life. Though they won't be arriving anytime soon, we wanted to confirm that they will have a rightful place in the future of Prehistoric Kingdom as update content. As this is highly requested content, we're going to do everything we can to ensure our eventual lineup uh, caters to species diversity, accuracy, and offers unique gameplay opportunities. The team hopes you're just as excited as we are to eventually plant the seeds for a rich kingdom of prehistoric fauna and flora. Interesting, I didn't even like really consider like prehistoric yeah, well, paleobotany or like uh, prehistoric flora as well. What do you think that entails? Are we get to like make like greenhouses or ensure that our you know certain animals are going to have certain uh, you know ancient or uh, prehistoric fauna and everything to, uh, in their habitats, and you have to like maybe grow it a certain way. And so I don't know. That's kind of interesting. I never even considered that. Oh, and that's a, that's the end. Uh, thank you for reading the beta announcement. As you can see, there's a lot to be excited for in regards to the upcoming content. Our regular development updates are expected to return in September, though in a more lightweight ver uh, fashion as we barrel towards the impending beta and early access uh, releases there. So it's been a hell of a journey for everyone, but it's finally time to close in for the home stretch. Until next time, the Prehistoric Kingdom team. So there you go. There is the beta information. And there, wow, there's a lot more stuff um, that we did not see in the trailer. Uh, I definitely think this uh, this kiosk system and the uh, the kind of the end game here for the uh kiosks and buildings everything really has interested me again let me know if i uh, was coming to the right conclusion about how that's going to work down below and let me know what you think of that uh, as well especially if you're coming from a standpoint of someone who's not like a big builder maybe someone who likes to take workshop items more so or just kind of take like pre-made blueprints uh, that are made by the company sometimes what do you think about that idea of being able to kind of have a prefab made kiosk or store basically to kind of uh, plop around and easily uh, switch out and everything so that's pretty cool there um all that kind of stuff was pretty neat with the science points. I don't know, the science points and excavation that just kind of sounds, um, at least right now, very similar to other uh, dinosaur games that we've played in the past there. I do think, though, yeah, the big thing for me, especially, you know, uh, this channel is all about the building aspect more so than focusing on, like, the animals and um, the gameplay aspect. I'll try the gameplay part of it, but we've, we're more so part of the builder uh, aspect there. The um, I'm very, very excited from a builder standpoint, essentially. The waterfalls, I know Estan again is going to freak out about the waterfalls. He is the waterfall guy there, but for me in particular, uh, yeah, this screenshot right here, bam, that's that's the one uh, that definitely gets me really excited. I know maybe a lot of people are like, oh yeah, cool, shovels and a box of bananas and a hoe, but no, just trust me, like, this is how you turn a build from uh, plain Jane whatever to, oh wow, look at the details kind of thing. So, uh, and again, we can, you know, take all these things and find other uses for them through uh, making them bigger, smaller, stretching them, all that kind of fun stuff. So, uh, who knows what the creativity um, will uh, show for from the community and everything so uh but yeah hey what do you think of the uh beta announcement the beta trailer all that kind of fun stuff we'll do that while we uh sign off here we'll look at the beta announcement trailer one last time with no sound in the background there we go uh but yeah what do you think of the um the beta announcement all the news coming what do you think of the new uh news from the devlog today 
Always excited to hear what you have to say. And uh, yeah, if this is your first time uh, hanging out with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button there because we will be covering all the fun prehistoric kingdom uh, news announcements and we'll be doing a bunch of builds once the beta actually does come out as we do have access to it. Uh, and yeah, don't forget to hit the like button. It does help out the channel, helps out the uh, video and everything, all that fun YouTube stuff. So <laughs> awesome. Hey, thanks so much everyone for hanging out. Always do appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.